Welcome guys, my name is Shabir and today we'll talk about decision statements. Uh, in other words, if statements. So we'll look at the uh, overview of if statements uh, followed by relational operators and how are they used in an if statement uh, followed by logical operators and then we'll look at the uh, structure of a decision uh, statement and we'll finish the whole thing with a coding example of a real life uh, application. So up until now, if you have been coding, uh, your your program was very sequential. It was uh, line one, two, three, and that was it. You can no you can no longer uh, your program did not have any paths to follow. It was just one path. You cannot go to different paths. With the introduction of if statements, it allows your program to go in, to go into different paths. So uh, you can have an if by itself. So if a condition A is true, do this. You can have an if else, meaning if condition A is true, do this, otherwise do that. If else, so if condition A is true, do this, otherwise if condition B is true, then do this. Uh, then you can have an if else if bar as well. Um, so if condition A is true, do this, otherwise verify for condition B if it's true, do that, otherwise do whatever is left. But you can never have an else by itself because an else is sort of like uh, per plan B, uh, step B. So if the, if condition A was never there, then you can not have a condition B. You have to first have a condition A. Now, the end result of uh, an if statement is always validated to a Boolean expression, which is either true or false. Um, and now let's look at the relational operators. So relational operators, these are the exact relational operators that you see in math so what this one is the the greater sign is if can if uh, an expression x is greater than y this is what it's doing uh, less than uh, a relation operator looks like this so these relational operators are used in uh, programming as well the only operator that is different is this guy over here the not equal to the not equal to is uh, with an exclamation mark and an equal sign and the equal to is no longer one equal it's two equal remember one equal uh, it means you're assigning something so if this was x equal to y it would mean that whatever is the value of y we're assigning it to x but in this case it's two equals so it is uh, an expression that it's validating saying is x equal equal to uh, y if it is then uh, then do that uh, do whatever follows it so let's look at logical operators there are three main logical operators there's the and operator with two ampersand sign then there's the or operator with two straight lines and then there's the not operator the one thing that you have to remember is when an expression has the and operator both expressions on the both expressions have to validate to a true for the whole statement to be true so if you have an expression like condition a uh, on this side and condition b on this side and you have the and operator in between both a and b has to validate true for the whole thing to be true if one of them is false then the whole thing falls apart the whole thing would be false for the or operator only one of them needs to be true so if you have condition a here and condition b here and you have the or operator in between only one of them needs to be true for the whole thing to be considered as true this is very important to remember because uh, in many cases you will likely have uh, situations where you need to uh, combine multiple expressions together for a specific condition to be true so let's look at the structure of an if statement. Here I have a small flowchart saying uh, if the sales of a specific uh, you know store are greater than fifty thousand, then we'll give a bonus of five hundred. Otherwise, we won't do anything else. So the condition is like this: we put the keyword if, then in brackets we put our conditions, and if this condition is true, then we write our uh, our statements over here. If it is not true, then it will not even bother going inside this uh, this uh, state this true statement it will just jump or to jump outside so this is how the code will look like if then 
the variable sales greater than 50,000. If it is true, then bonus is equal to 500. Now, an if else statement, uh, it is very similar except you have the else part over here in the bottom. Now, this else will match with this if. So, the flowchart looks like this. If the temperature is greater than 40, all right, then we display that we we display hot, otherwise we display cold. So, in this case, this is what it looks like. If the temperature is greater than 40, then the message over here message dot show hot. So, we're on this path over here right now. Otherwise, we don't even need to check if the temperature is not equal to 40 because if this statement is wrong, then automatically there's the else over here that is matching to it. So if this is false, then we go on the else side, message.show, and we put cold in between. So that means if this is not true, then this has to be true. Now let's look at the nested if statements. Nested if statements work exactly the same way, except you they're nested, <laughs> they're nested within each other. So in this case, we have a situation where uh, if the salary is greater than forty uh, four hundred thousand, all right. If the salary of someone is greater than or equal to four hundred thousand, then we follow this path over here. Then we verify again over here. If the person has been on the the job for more than uh, more than two years, more than or equal to two years, then we display that this person is qualified for the loan. If the person is, if the salary is greater than 400,000 and this condition fails over here, then we say that you do not meet the minimum uh, years uh, at your current job requirement. But if the, if this condition over here of $400,000 of salary is not true, then we simply say that, you know, you don't qualify for the loan. So the only way this person will be able to qualify for the loan is if their salary is greater than 400000 and they have been on the job for more than or equal to two years. Now, let's look at a coding example and to simplify everything that I've been telling you so far. Here we are designing an application uh, that for a bank uh, that will charge a base fee of $10 per month plus uh, uh, the following check uh, check fees for a commercial account so 10 cent for uh, for checks less than uh, 20 checks per month uh, 8 cents between for checks between 20 to 39 6 cents for 40 to 59 checks and 4 cents for 60 or more checks now we're writing an application that will determine the monthly service fees of the bank. So let's look at the coding part. So here is the application designed. Here we're going to put our our number of checks uh, and based on the conditions that we have given over here, the we will determine how much is the service fee per month. So let's look into it. So, first, we'll declare our service C is going to be a double. So, we'll initialize it to zero. We'll initialize it to zero. Then we need a variable that will store the number of checks. We'll initialize that to zero as well, and we're going to use the try parse. So if you rec if you don't not recall try parse, you can look at the try par the parse versus try parse video. But the try parse will basically take in the number of checks, and it will try to convert that to an integer. And if it is true, then if everything works fine, it'll convert it and store it inside the variable num of checks. And then we'll start writing our condition. So if the number of checks is less than 20 sorry less than 20 then we want our service fee to be 10 cent per check and we're going to add our ten dollars to it ten dollars will always be there so we'll add 10 to it now the other one is if the number of checks are between twenty 
and between 39 our service fee will be equal to 8 cent For four between forty and number of checks is less than or equal to fifty nine. Then service fee is equal to six cents per check. With ten dollar per month fee as fixed. And if all this uh, fails, then our last resort is anything but greater than 60. And finally, once the whole thing is calculated, we will write that to our text box. And if I put C over here, it's going to add the dollar sign to it. So let's run this application. Actually, before we run it, let's double check our uh, conditions. So, 10, so 10 cents for all the checks that are uh, less than 20 that is good uh, between 20 and 39 8 cent between 40 and 59 6 cents and be anything greater than 60 it's 10 cents and we're adding 10 dollars per month so we're good let's run this application and see the output so let's say i put in 25 checks there you go Twelve dollars. So if I put um, sixty checks, it's twelve dollars and forty cents. If I put a hundred checks, it's fourteen dollars. So four cents times a hundred. That's uh, uh, four four dollars plus ten dollars of the uh, monthly fee. So that the monthly service fee is ten dollars. So this is how the if statements work. Now, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to put it in the comment section below and I will get to it as soon as possible, I promise. Um, and please share this video with anyone you think will benefit from it as well. I'll be sharing more videos in the future on Sundays. Uh, so click on the subscribe button to get notified every time there's a video that's uploaded. Uh, thank you very much for listening and have a good day.